So we've already started to learn about something we called a binary search. The idea is that if I had some list, in our case we'll use an array uh, just to kind of uh, view this uh, list. If I wanted to do a lookup of nine, you know, where is nine inside of my array? I would have to start right here and go, oh, it's going, it's at the one, no, it's at the two, no, it's at the three, it's no, at four, five, six, seven, eight. I'd finally be able to say that the index was eight. And we refer to the fact that, well, if it was a, I did a lookup 10 or 100, it's not in here. So my worst case scenario results in me having to do a lookup of in, log, or sorry, uh, in. I have to go through the entire list. So we introduced something uh, referring to a binary search. A binary search said that I have some bottom, I have some top, and what I do is I calculate the middle point in between them. In this case, it would be here at the 5, where I would just say, uh, since that's an 8, that's a 0, top plus bot, top plus bot equals 8, divided by 2 equals 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And so what I do is, let's say I'm, I'm doing a lookup on uh, my 9 in this case. Well, I say is my mid, which is 5, equal to my lookup, my, my key. No. So, all right, well, then we make the adjustments. That, bo that, that mid in that case is too small so we would say it becomes the new bot and I recalculate out my top plus bot again this time it's uh, 8 plus 4 which is 12 divided by 2 divided by 2 6 so 5 6 now I'm at 7 this is now my mid once again we do the same thing uh, mid is still too small uh, compared to key so we make another change this becomes my bot this becomes my mid you can start to see it's slowly moving moving uh, more and more and more I would continue to adjust uh, until eventually this got mid the reason why this approach uh, is kind of often looked at as nicer is because just as we were saying this this w was what we would classify as a linear lookup again it means I have to go through the entire thing this binary search we actually would call a bisectional search search there we are the reason why is because we're actually cutting it in half every single time. And so while I didn't magically uh, use eight times, I used, let's see, one, two, three, four. So I used actually half of the amount. Well, since I'm cutting it down, this gets classified as a log of n. The issue might be, though, that if we thought about this implementation for a, me a moment, m very similar to how we look at things uh, in real life. Let's say, for example, I have an old, old-fashioned uh, book. I know, ancient here going on here. So here's my terrible rendition of a book. I don't. I, I, let's not use those lines. I think I, that's good enough. <laughs> So if I'm doing, say, a dictionary, or uh, a real-world dictionary, or a real-world phone book, very old-timey things, they had some order to them. There was some particular order to them. The issue is, when I naturally start to look things up, I don't know quickly what the middle point is. I don't know, oh, put it right here. I'm going to try. I'm going to do my best to get here, but in reality, I'm not getting perfect middle and then I have to fiddle around with this and so one of the things we do is we actually sort of try to mirror uh, human search through something called an interpolation search the idea is we maybe organize things in a manner that is a little bit more 
similar to how uh, a, a person would see things. You know, in my case, uh, we have a lot more E's, so E's maybe take up this entire section of whatever my list is. So I don't need to go through and kind of constantly fiddle through the E's. Maybe I uh, see, here's my starting point, I can jump all the way to like here to get to my D. So how we kind of implement this and why this is important is we have something we would classify as a skip list. The entire pr uh, principle behind this is we can take that binary search implementation that we had up here, we can change it into an interpolation search, and we can do it through a linked list. We can use those data structures that we've learned in the past as a way to actually kind of implement these things a little bit. So one of the things with a skip list is it operates on a, a tier system, on a sort of level system. And the idea behind that is that at some bottom level, we're going to call that S0, uh, skip 0, that bottom level is going to have every element that we happen to have in our list. Let's say I had uh, 1, 2, 3, 40, 50, 99 in there. So all of those elements are going to be stored on this bottom list. One of the things we also do to sort of help out this skip list approach is we also are going to include a negative infinity and a positive infinity. This is going to help for searching uh, inside of our skip list. So once again, everything here at the bottom is going to have those elements. So here on the far left, we've got our negative infinity. Right beside it, we happen to have our 1. Right after that, we happen to have our 2. After that, we happen to have our 3, our 40, our 50, and then our 99, followed by our positive infinity. So why a skip list starts to change is I don't just have one list going on here. Because uh, if we think about it, that's this is an array. This is a skip. This is a link list that I have done nothing. No, one of the things I do is I actually add additional levels. That's why I kind of introduced that in the past. I could come in and add a second level. One of the things that I have to put in is the infinities. Those are going to be super important, again, for searching. They're going to actually be in every level. But now I arbitrarily decide which one of these elements is going to be more important. Let's say, for example, since you see that we happen to have a lot of smaller numbers going on here of 1, 2, and 3, 1 is going to appear more often. Same thing with 40. Why? Just because, you know, 40 gets to 50 pretty quickly, and then we'll do 99 for the sake of uh, just posterity. Now there's some connection going on here as well. See, these all, I'm using these lines to indicate what's next and what's, we'll call it below. So, uh, below. Mm -hmm. Skip ahead, because drawing lines can be very meticulous, as you can see. The reason why I'm doing this is to kind of indicate now that I have some connection going on between these nodes. Remember, this is still implemented through a node system, through a linked list system. I'm going to do one, two more levels, two more levels. So I come in, I'll use a different color here. I'll use uh, blue to represent my second level. Again, I have my negative infinity. Get those lines in there. We have to have them for those as well. I'm going to put the 1 in, because again, that really does seem like it's going to be very important. I make my connections. I'm going to skip all the way to 99. Uh, 40 doesn't seem to be very popular. And positive infinity. Now the last thing I need to do is I need to make one final list. In this case I'll call it S3 
the only things in this list are my negative and positive infinities. Again, as we keep on saying, this is to allow for easy lookup. So now what I've done is I've created this sort of structure. This is important because, as I was saying earlier, we're looking at this idea of an interpolation search, how people uh, sort of look through things a little easier. I have a, happen to have a lot of elements going on uh, that are sort of in the single digits. So for our sake, you know, I need a stop, a starting point. And I don't, don't want to have to go through all these small numbers if I'm very large. So I can actually skip really far ahead. So in this case, let's say I wanted to, I'm going to scroll down just a hair. And I wanted to uh, do a lookup. Let's see, I will use yellow for this. I wanted to do a lookup on key 3. Remember, these nodes, they can have keys. They're not just elements anymore. They, it can be anything that we've had in the past. So how do I implement this? How do I implement out the, or how do I do, say, for example, uh, my, my search? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here. I'm going to start at my top level. Top level, furthest, furthest, left. And as you can imagine, that's uh, negative infinity. Uh, so I should never just magically be able to go down. Or, you know, this if this happens to be what I was looking for, awesome, done. The first thing I do is, like I said, I'm starting here. I do a check. Is this what I was looking for? Is this what I was looking for? No. Uh, it's negative infinity. So I look at my dot next. What is my dot next? Well, since we notice those horizontal lines are telling me, that is my dot next. And the question I would ask here is, so I, I first did a lookup. Uh, does 3 equal negative infinity? No. So I looked to my right. What's my dot next? So 3, sorry, my negative infinity pointed to my positive infinity. And so I say, is it uh, equal to positive infinity? No. Is it less than positive infinity? So I ask those three questions. Am I at my element? Am I, is my next element uh, the one I was looking for? Or am I smaller than my element? This actually sort of gets repeated over and over again, because while this happens you know, obviously here, since 3 is less than uh, uh, positive infinity, we hit a yes. As a result, since I saw a yes, I go down a level. Go down a, let me make that a little bigger, down a level. Go down a level. And so I'm actually going to repeat the exact same process this time off of a new number. So, once again, I ask my question. Am I at the same spot? 3 equal to negative positive, uh, negative infinity? No. I actually can skip that step because we've already done that lookup before, but for our sake, I'm just kind of repeating myself. Now, is 3 equal to whatever my next is? My next being 1. Is 3 equal to 1? No. Now, is 3 less than 1. Since we hit a no here, this is super important, since we have gone through, it's not equal to it, it's not equal to the next, it's actually less, it, uh, our 3 is larger than our 1, we're going to move to the right. Our now, our, our comparison in this case is now going to become our one point. I don't need to do negative ones anymore. So the same approach actually is going to get repeated. I take this. We've already done our lookup of we know it's not that. So I then say, well, what about my next? 
in this case 99 is and I'm gonna scroll down just a hair is 3 less than 99 well just like before if I see a yes I go down a level I saw a yes I go down a level as you can imagine I'm gonna do just to kind of jump through it I see that I'm here is my dot next equal to 3 no is 3 less than 40? Yes. So what do I do? I go down a level. So I've just sort of traversed through this little approach here. Once again, I say, is my 3 equal to 1? No. Is it less than 2? No. Remember, that means that that means I can come over one more. Is 3 equal to 3? Yes, it is. And I've just gone through my skipped list.